Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show how to make a texture of our denim jean pants in Substance Painter. Here's my finished work in real time. Everyone has their own method to make a denim texture. So I wish my video will be helpful to develop your own skill. Here is 7 key steps getting project done. Step 1. Exporting 3 meshes. I export 3 meshes. One is high poly without part, such as a Burton, Rivet, and Serra, and a low poly without part. These two meshes will be used to bake maps in Substance Painter. And I export a low poly with part. This mesh actually used as a base mesh in Substance Painter. Step 2 is fixing AO map. Step 3 is making denim base color with a seamless texture file I found on the internet. And step 4 is building height with a seamless texture file, which is the same file as the step 3. And step 5 is making color variation with a smart mask. And step 6 is working on a button and rivet. And lastly, step 7 is creating stitch lines, including the buttonhole. Alright, let's get started. In ZBrush, I exported 3 meshes. Here is my high poly containing all detail. For a better result in a normal map, try to put all the detail you can create in the high poly. I saved and named it GenPants underscore high. I move the slide to level 1 and export the low poly and name the jean pants underscore low. Now on hide part and export the low poly with the part using plugin subtool master since there are several subtool layers. I saved and named the jean pants underscore low underscore with part. In Substance Painter, I open the new project with the 4K and select the low poly mesh without the part and hit OK. And I'm gonna bake the maps. I select all the maps and select the high mesh without the part and bake it. It will take some minutes and so I speed up a little bit. Okay, the maps are done. And now I'm gonna open the low poly with the part. This mesh will be my base mesh in the Substance Painter. And I wanna check the maps, I just back it. It looks good though. Um, you wanna check the normal map. And normal map looks good as well. Um, if you see that the map, the extra part actually kind of flat because I use the mesh without the part to bake the maps so I need to fix maps actually it's a AO mostly so I'm just create a new layer and name the AO underscore fix to make the new layer works properly you need to uh, um, switch some option under setting texture set setting under setting I add uh, a channel 
and switch that to replace and I select the layer mode to AU and I connect the AU map to the new layer I just created I add paint layer and switch the mode to no more. You should make sure you switch the mode to no more to make it work properly. I painted all the black part with white. Fixing map is somehow tedious job, but you need to do it to get the better result at the end. Okay, looks good. I just fixed all the dark area of the AO map. Now I'm gonna bring the denim texture I found on the internet into the Substance Painter. I just drop it here and select the texture and choose the project. Here's my texture, I just brought it here. And I made a new layer and changed the name as a base color. And I select the color and love for me. And I drop the texture into the layer. And I make it a little brighter. Okay. And actually, I set the scale to like 10. So you need to find your own scale number with your texture and I made a new fill layer then select the color and change the color a little bit and I change the mode to multiply and make it a little darker And just slide a little bit down to maybe 40. And I'm gonna add a filter here. I'm gonna use the color collector. And I'm gonna change the parameters until I get the right color. It may be fun to find your favorite color, but at the same time it's gonna be a tedious job until you find the right color. Okay, a little bit increase the slider. And I wanna change the roughness a little bit. And I'm going to bring another texture into the Substance Painter. I'm going to use it as a height map. I'm going to make a new layer and connect the map to the layer. Actually, it's a specular map of the previous one, but I can use the texture to make height of the denim texture. You need to make sure to match the scale to the color map. I want to add a contrast filter to change the level of the height. To find the best value of the height, you need to take some mini 
it and uh, test uh, in the different mode such as black and white in height mode or in normal mode it should be helpful to find the best uh, result of the height okay here's my best uh, numbers for the height Now I want to clean up the maps with the masks. Now I'm going to make a dark area on the texture. So I'm going to go to Smart Mask and I'm gonna use the Dirt properties. I made a new layer and grab the mask and drop up here. I will change the name to the mask name for convenience. So using a smart mask is uh, so good because there is already prepared everything for you. With changing a few parameters, it already looks so good. So take some minute and play with the parameters. Actually, the white area should be dark color, so I need to change the layer mode to multiply. Now I got the dark color, and I want to change the slide a little bit down. and select the color only and change the color I use the spoiled tool to pick the denim color and I change it a little bit lighter and it looks good now this time I want to make a washed out or lighter area on the texture for that I'm gonna make the another layer then gonna use the LG Dusty it will create a nice uh, random white area for free I wanna change the color a little bit again I'm gonna use the spoiled color to pick the color on the texture change it to a little light color it looks like too strong so I need to adjust the color so I want to change the layer mode to lighten but you could keep the normal since nothing is changed in this case I'm gonna change the color a little bit again then I want to reduce the opacity a little bit down to maybe 22 Okay, it looks good now, but it looks like uh, there is a stand out and strong part a little bit, so I wanna fix it. For that, I wanna make a new paint layer and I wanna paint over the stand out part. I selected the brush color black and just make sure you need to change the layer mode to multiply to make it work properly. Okay, I fixed the standout part somehow. Now I want to adjust the color using the parameters on the mask layer. The parameter is about the default, so it's not that much complicated to use. And I want to reduce the opacity a little bit down. And looks good though. 
Since I'm not making uh, all the zoom, I try to minimize the washed out part. But if you want to make uh, all the zoom looking, you just make the washed out part very stronger. I want to change the layer name to mask name I used, cause sometimes it's just so useful if you come back later and see which mask you used. Now I want to make some patterns along the stitch lines using the edge stretched mask. So I want to change the name to the original mask name. It looks too strong, so I need to adjust a little bit. I want to change the layer mode to lighter. And I want to move the slide a little bit down. And want to change the color. I want to change the color using this void. And I need to adjust some parameters of the mask. There are several parameters, so I need to play with them until I get the result I want. Sometimes you will see a much better result with just small changes of the parameters. It might be boring job, but you should do this to get the best result later. Now I wanna pick some standout part, which is I don't like it. I want to try to keep only the pattern along the stitch line so for that I want to create a new paint layer and change the mode to multiply and I just paint over with the black color something like this so I just speed up the video because this is kind of a boring job. But one thing I learned is this is not an efficient way. So I switched my method to another one, which is block out the entire mesh with a black color, then just paint over along the stitch line using the white color. With this method, I can quickly bring the patterns back along the stitch lines only and the rest of the part should be blocked out. I actually turn on the symmetry option. If you look at the icon like a triangle on the menu bar, all these patterns are actually from your curvature map. So that's why you try to put all the details in the high poly as much as you can. As you can see there are some missing parts of the pattern. But don't worry about it, I will fix it later.
Okay, as I mentioned earlier, there are some missing parts of the pattern. So I'm going to fix that part now. There is nothing special. You need some test and practice with some brushes. And once you get the proper your paint brush, then that's it. You just keep painting until you cover all the missing area. For this job, I mostly use a basic soap to brush, erase, and smudge. So once I paint, I erase some part, then I break the straight line using the smudge. This is a boring part, so I just speed up the video. If you don't like, please skip the part.
Now I want to paint some big wrinkles on the front part. I made another paint layer for that and I did some tests with a paint brush. I quickly painted the straight line first, then with the smudge tool I tried to break the shape of the straight line so that it looks more naturally. I think my parents are too much centralized now, but since this is a demo I will just keep it for now. If you have a nice painting skill, it's totally big benefit for your texturing job. Now I paint some extra part on a new layer. Actually, I don't know what to call this part. If you know, please let me know.
Now I wanna make some more variation around the edgy part. So I'm gonna use fabric edgy damage mask. I made a new layer and attach the mask to the layer. And then I change the layer name to the original mask name to see what layer I used. I want to change the color a little bit. I want to change the layer mode to lighten and I'll just uh, opacity it a little bit under the mask I need to uh, adjust some parameters Again, I'm not making to all the jeans, so I need to minimize the washed out and try to keep the kind of brand new looking. Just I want to play with the parameter until I get the right value I want. Change the ambient occasion as well. Those are patterns are mostly from the curvature, so once you change the curvature, the image is totally different. So try to find your best uh, parameter values. I want to reduce some opacity again. For the part I don't need, I made a new paint layer and I switched the mode to multiply and I paint over the part with a black color. This is the best way to remove the part you don't need. All the process is about the same as uh, I did in previous, so nothing is difficult. So removing pattern is much easier than making a pattern. So I like that. Hopefully you like watching the video. Yeah, it looks good. Try to minimize all standout part as much as I can. Okay, let's move to next step. Okay, this time I wanna use another edgy stretched mask to make the strong edgy color.
I change some parameters under the mask. Once you play with the parameters, you will get uh, your best numbers for the parameters to get uh, your desired result. In this job, I'm mostly working on the edge area to make it a little stand out. So I wanna reduce some value of the, the rest of the part except the edge area. For that, I made a new paint layer and change that mold to multiply. And I'm gonna paint over the area I don't need with a black color. The process is pretty much the same as uh, I did in previous, so there is uh, nothing special. Maybe it's uh, another music time.
Now I want to work on the Bolton and Ribbon material so I grab a metal material and drop up on the layer. And I add a black mask. And I select the polygon of the Bolton and Ribbon layer. I adjust the uh, roughness a little bit. Then now I have a shiny material there. And I wanna put some text on the bottom, which is bumped in. So. I want to bring my alpha map into the substance painter and I select the alpha and select the project here's my alpha map I create in the Photoshop You just make sure you need to select the height and change the slide to minus value to make the bump in. Just click right in on the center of the button, then it will make the nice uh, dented in effect with the texture. I use the same alpha map for the rebed part. All the rebeds here use the same UV layout, so I don't have to worry about the rest of the rebeds. Now I want to put some fake pattern on the center of the button, making high to normal repack using a texture map is uh, one of the most strong features in Substance Painter. With the fake uh, pattern, the button will be more buildable. Okay, the button looks good now. I made a new layer to fix and touch up the dark area. Again, this is another simple process, so let me play the video along.
Okay, now this is the last step of the project. So now I'm going to make the stitchy lines. So I made on a layer and changing the name to stitchy. And uh, here's my reference color. So if you see the picture, there is the one single line and two double lines. I select the yellow color with a spoiler. I made a paint layer. And I select the stitch small to make double lines. I change the count to 2 and adjust some options. Change the size. You need to test a little bit until you get the right size and the space. I put some follow jitter and angle jitter. And position zero just a little bit. Those zeros make uh, the stitch lines more available. You need to take uh, some time to find uh, your best numbers for the parameters.
Okay, finally I got uh, my best numbers of the parameter. So it's time to draw the stitch lines. I wanna draw all the double stitch lines first. After that, I wanna make a single stitch lines. In Substance Painter, there are only few tools, so it's uh, sometimes hard to draw lines properly. So I wish Substance Painter add more tools in the future, something like a pen tool in Photoshop, so I can draw curving lines quickly. The default stitch brushes in Substance Painter, they have a limitation to use. So I think using the Substance Designer, you could create uh, your own version of stitch brushes. Personally, I never try to make my own, but someday soon, I wanna make uh, my own version of the stitch brushes. Okay, now I wanna speed up the video again. You can turn on the lazy button, which is the, the big two dots icon on the menu bar. It is sometimes useful, but not always. So it's totally up to you. Just find your own best method. Personally, I use the lazy option when I draw the long distance lines. I really like uh, stitchy brush in the Substance Painter because it is so easy to make stitches comparing to making stitchy lines in ZBrush. In ZBrush, if you want to make uh, stitchy lines, you need to uh, add more subdivision levels so it easily become heavy data.
Now I finish all the double stitches, so it's time to make a single stitches. With having more tests and practice with the parameter of the stitch, you can get better result you want. So don't be afraid of testing and practicing some parameters you have. Okay, I think I finished the setting for the single stitch. So now I wanna draw all the single stitch on the denim texture. I speed up the video again.
Okay, I'm done making all the stitchy lines. Now I wanna put a button hole and end of the stitches. I'm gonna use my own alpha map I made in Photoshop. I actually used uh, some reference picture I found on the internet and I modified a little bit in the Photoshop to make the nice the alpha map for buttonhole and end of the stitches. It is so useful if you find nice reference photos from the internet. You don't have to just stick to one single reference picture and follow the exact parent. You just use a whole different style of the picture with the different patterns and just try to make your own sense and imagination. Adding more detail, it will make uh, the texture more believable. Now I want to put the button hole. I just want to clean up the maps. Lastly, I want to duplicate the stitchy layer to make a dent area of the stitches. This is just extra step, so if you don't like it, you don't have to make the dent area. Under dent layer, I add a blur filter, then adjust the value. I fix the stitch line just a little bit.
Okay, I think I'm done making the denim texture. Actually, it was a recreation of my previous project. But I tried to put the, all the details and the same workflow from the previous project. If you have any question or suggestion, please leave your comment under the comment section. Please subscribe and hit the button like if you like this tutorial. Thank you so much guys. I will see you next time. Bye.